Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course on display devices. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to go through the requirements of your 220.701 Essentials exam, section 1.7, where we need to distinguish between the different display devices and their characteristics. We're going to look at projectors and LCD monitors and connector types and settings, everything you need to know to understand what's going on behind the scenes with how your monitors work and how you can plug them into your computers. Let's start with an overview of video. If you recall back in the day when we had those big old cathode ray tubes, many people in many environments still see them, but it's very rare to find them these days. As the CRTs are falling away, we're starting to replace everything these days with an LCD. It's hard to even find one to purchase anymore. There's a number of very large environments, very specialized displays that perhaps are still using this cathode ray tube. You generally find these in these smaller sizes is relatively smaller, 15 inch, 19 inch, 21 inch. It's hard to find the really big ones anymore. It's just not cost effective to make it because it's this big tube of glass. It's much more cost effective to do LCD. You'll also see a number of resolutions associated with CRTs. This is not the only resolutions that you will see associated with it, but it's very common to see this. XGA, SXGA, and UXGA, and you can see those resolutions that are there. You'll also see CRTs referred to and having a statistic called Hertz, which is the refresh rate that the amount of time the screen has to be refreshed. CRT displays only keep the, the active view on the screen and have phosphors that must constantly be refreshed. And so there is a setting that says, how often does this particular monitor require a refresh before the it fades from the screen? You're not able to see it. The higher refresh rate, generally speaking, is better on the eyes. On CRTs, if you had a, a CRT that wasn't designed very well, it was a very inexpensive one, it may have a slow refresh rate. And the screen may look like it flickers, especially if you're in an environment with fluorescent lights or you're very sensitive to flickering on the screen. And sometimes if you saw a more expensive uh, monitor, CRT, then the hertz rate would be higher. It would be 70 or 75 hertz. And in those cases, you didn't see any flickering at all because it was refreshing so quickly that you didn't have that problem, especially people that had that sensitive sensitivity to those refresh rates. Uh, you really don't see CRTs around much anymore. And you really don't have to worry too much about refresh rates anymore because LCD displays work a little bit differently in how they operate. We're not refreshing the entire screen any longer only certain parts of the screen. Let's look at that. Our LCD displays stand for liquid crystal displays. And those LCD displays work a very interesting technology. There are different filters set up in the computer that allows you to see a particular color going through. So there's many, many pixels on your LCD display, some red pixels, some blue pixels, some green pixels. They're all crammed in there. And they're all sitting there off until such time that a piece of electrical signal comes through and changes the way that these crystals are polarized. We, we apply some power to the liquid, and the liquid changes the way that it is polarized. And since we have these filters here, they change and be able to send through from the back of the display a light. And when they change from a, a vertical to a horizontal, or vice versa, depending on the LCD you're using, now it gets through the filter, it brightens up that particular color, and you're now able to see the color red. When we turn that pixel off, it goes black again. So that's how our liquid crystal display is able to provide us with a very, very crisp view of what's going on. And it's able to do it in a very, very small environment. It's not these big monster CRTs anymore. It's this very thin and very narrow LCD. It's also using, in, in most cases, a lot less power. So we're also a very green technology in how it works. And it just allows us to do a whole lot more in a much smaller space. When we're planning to spec out an LCD display, you'll see some of these specifications. First, the screen size. And when you're looking at the size of a display, you not only want to see how big the actual LCD screen is, but you also want to know what the native resolution of that LCD monitor is. The native resolution needs to match what you're normally going to be using it at for your computer. It needs to match what your computer can output to it. If you aren't matching the native resolution of your LCD display with this, the configuration of the resolution on your computer, it will try to adjust, but your screen is not going to be as crisp as it is. So try it yourself on your own LCD display. If you've got a very crisp view right now, change it to a lower resolution, and you'll see it 
takes up the same amount of space on the screen, but it's a little fuzzy. It's not as crisp as it was. So you want to be sure if you're buying a brand new LCD display, just make sure that the maximum capabilities of your video card of your computer match the capabilities, the native resolution capabilities of the LCD display that you're purchasing. There's also different aspect ratios. There is a 4 by 3, which is a bit of a square resolution aspect ratio. It's the one that we traditionally see with older types of monitors and older types of televisions. These days, many of our views are 16 by 9. If you're watching this video, I've done all of my videos in a 16 by 9 resolution, so they fit properly in an HD format, and they work in widescreen, which is what I'm working with on my LCD display right here. You'll also see the response times. This is a little bit different than the Hertz rating that we had for CRTs, but it's a similar idea. How quickly does the screen respond whenever we ask one of those pixels to change? If it's slower in responding, the screen will feel a little bit sluggish. LCD displays these days work pretty quick. They're getting faster and faster with their response times, so we're finding that we aren't getting that sluggishness when we move the mouse across the screen or we watch some video or we watch some fast action on a, on a video uh, on our screen. We don't have to worry too much about response time, but if yours is sluggish, you may want to look at the specifications for that LCD display and say, what is the response time? How quickly should we expect these pixels to change whenever we send different electrical signal into those?